creative. Before we get to that, I want to talk about something that David just mentioned, which are the Apple Distinguished Educator applications. Now, the applications come around every, I believe it is two years, and they opened up at the beginning of February, and they're due at the beginning of March. And John, you're an Apple Distinguished Educator. Tell us a little bit about the ADE program. Well, uh, you've already identified the key element there, which is uh, every other year Apple opens up a window. Um, there's a there's a website they have. Uh, I believe it's ade.apple.com, and uh, you do about eight items. I don't I don't know what the current state of the art is, but I think it's about an eight item reflection, and then you make a two minute video, and um, and then mysterious things happen, and if it goes well, you get an email about two months later, and they say come and hang out with us in a wonderful and exotic location for five days. And and can you tell us a little bit about the application video? Because you know, there's a lot of stuff following the hashtag ADE class of 2015. And there's a lot of people that are out there uh, applying. How many people apply each cycle, do you, would you say? I don't know that there's an exact number, but my guess is between six to 800 would be my guess. I mean, there are people that await like myself, I, I, I was lucky I got in on my first attempt, but I had waited six years to get my body of work where I thought it would be an acceptable level. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that are – they're gearing up for that thing a year, a year and a half, two years ahead of time. How many people actually get selected per class? Whew. Well, it's hard because last time they, they combined Mexico, Canada, and the United States. Um, I'm going to say in the U.S. there's um, – Maybe uh, between 50 and 75 every other year, if memory serves correctly. It's not a lot. It's not a lot of people. One of the questions that, that comes up a lot is, what does it take to get into Apple Distinguished? Now, we've done a lot of podcasts last cycle where we brought on Apple Distinguished educators, and they talked to us a little bit about tricks of the trade, how they made their videos. What tips would you give somebody who's out there trying to come up with the perfect Apple Distinguished video? I would say, you know, probably the biggest thing I see because I'm involved on the on the Google cert certified side as well, and uh, biggest mistake that I see people make is they say, "I want to go there and learn to be a fill in the blank," and you're kind of already it. It's more that somebody's acknowledging your body of work, and and what most organizations are looking for when they have a distinguished or certified person is that they're looking for somebody who's kind of a thought leader uh, regionally. You don't have to ne necessarily be a national power, but you're going to want to be presenting at Q or regional events like that. If you've done some stuff at ISTE, that's a nice thing. But then there's the other part is they just don't want people who are a fan of Apple or a fan of whatever product. They want innovative users. So those, to me, are the two essential pieces is that uh, you have a large impact. You, you're typically presenting to thousands of people. Like if in your application you say, I trained everybody at my school, probably not enough. Um, if you say, I've loved Apple since 1985, that's not going to get it done. They're looking for real innovators, and uh, typically uh, you already are one. They're just waiting to give you the correct uh, shirt and label that says, join us officially. So, so, John, you're saying that you know teachers re really need to approach it as a, hey, Apple, I've been a fill in the blank for years. That's the the tactic I took was I'm already doing this. You guys might as well welcome me in because uh, I'm already do doing film things. I'm already doing video things. I've already taken a district to one to one. So, you know, why not just have me working inside the loop with you guys? Well, let's talk a little bit about that district, for instance. When you do become an Apple Distinguished Educator, could you talk to us a little bit about the relationship that Apple forms with either the individual or with the school district? Um, yeah, on the – as far as the school district side, there's a series of, um, of uh, papers you have to file to make sure that you um, – that you are not in conf conflict of interest. Like, for example, if you're the person that is in charge of actually buying all the Apple devices, um, there are legal uh, parameters for that. Yeah, I see what you're doing. What you're doing there, Sam. Um, <laughs> if you um, and and then some districts, I know it's it's less stringent in California, but there are some districts back east where you cannot accept a gift of over twenty dollars. Well, it's going to be a problem in that case to work with Apple. So they actually have a form where your um, your legal representatives from your district can say, we are observe the terms of what's going to happen in this. 
and then we will approve it. And there's all kinds of things like form se for form 700s that you have to deal with. It's not a hard process, um, but Apple is very cognizant of the uh, the realities of the legal of the legal side. Well, we are certainly out there interested in seeing people who are out there and uh, applying for ADE. I know on the hashtag, we've all been sharing our videos back and forth. David. You